What I want to do in this video is really think about what happens when we define a function, and actually what happens as we step through the program and we use the function. So let's say we, we, we write this program, just like we did in the last video, and we run it. So we, the interpreter will start at this first line over here. It says, oh, look, there's a function definition. We're, we're defining the function factorial. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a big box. And this big box is the environment. And an environment for a program is all of the different definitions and variable definitions and everything that are specific to what or the context that the program is running in. So immediately, the program will associate the name factorial with this whole function right over here. So right when it says define factorial, it'll actually associate, it'll actually, let me write it over here. It'll actually associate factorial. It'll actually associate factorial, the label factorial, I guess you could say it. It'll associate the label factorial with a function, with a function that looks like all of this business right over here. So you'll pass it a number. You'll pass it a number. And I'm not using, well, maybe I'll write it like this. It's a function. It's a function. And I'm not using the, you'll see different notations, lambda notation and all this fancy stuff if you take a formal computer science class. But all I'm just saying is f factorial refers to a function that has the parameters, that has the parameters, has the parameters, it only has one parameter, it has the parameter number. And then when you, and then given, given this function with the parameter number, it will then, it'll then process this code right here. It'll then process this code. So let me just copy and paste it right here. And then whoops, I'm doing it in the wrong I'm doing it in the wrong layer. Let me copy it and paste it again. So let me try to copy it. Let me copy it and then let me paste it. So that's what it's doing right over there. And actually I should make this box. The environment includes all of this. I think you'll bear with me. I didn't draw this orange box big enough the first time around. See, let me do that just so that no one gets confused. Just so that no one gets confused, let me expand the orange box. And oh, I erased a little bit. Parameter, one of the parameters is number. Is number, and then that orange box goes around the whole thing. That's a green. That's green. That's a green color, not a green. All right, here we go. So right when we hit that this first few lines, it's saying, look, in our entire global environment, there's this. We're defining a function. The factorial will now refer to a function that takes the parameter number, and then it'll run all of this code that we've defined here, and then it'll return whatever inside this function world, whatever the value of the variable product is. And then it keeps going line by line by line, and then we get to this line right over here. And it says the variable user input is equal to, and then it calls the function input, and it passes the function input. And I'm starting to use a little bit of the terminology that we've been exposed to. It passes the function input a string. So this right here is a string. And once again, string sounds like a fancy word, but it literally means string of characters. Or this text right here, the text, enter a non-negative integer to take the factorial of colon space. So even the spaces are part of the strings. And the, the telltale sign for a string is it's going to be inside some type of quotation marks, either double or single quotation marks. So by passing this to that input function, that tells the input function what, do, what to prompt the user. So it prompts the user with this string. The user types in a number or some type of expression that gets evaluated and then gets stored in user input. Or I, sh I really should say, in, in the Python context, user input refers to that value. So let's say the user inputs three, then the variable user input, then the variable user input, user input, will now refer will refer in this global environment. Now factorial refers to a function. User input, user input will refer to user input refers to what whatever the user typed in. I'm going to go with the specific example of three. Then we go to the next line. And it's saying, look, make factorial of user input. Make this entire variable refer to whatever we get when we call factorial of user input, factorial of this variable over here. And so this is the interesting part. At this point in the program, the factorial to, of user input, this part right over here, it will make a call. 
it makes a call to this function. It makes a call to this function, and this and it gives it the argument of whatever user input is. Now, user input is referring to three. User input is referring to three, so it is going to pass three to the function factorial. So three gets passed here, and essentially within this function world. So now let's say that this is the context of running this function. So within this function world, let me make it clear. So now within this function world, right over here, the functions environment, the variable number, the variable number within this function world now refers to now refers to that same it now refers to 3 now i want to be a little bit i now want to be a little bit careful because we're 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 starting to touch on the idea of scope of a variable the variable number the variable number in this function world it is only referenceable within the function and we do ref refer it within the function it is not referable outside of the function so if i if down here someplace i would say print number you would get an error because it would be out of the scope of that variable this this variable it's a parameter of this function it's only usable within this function its scope the place where you can refer to it is only in this function so you get that number and then it does the code that we've looked at before. It sets the variable product. It, it, the product, so product, the variable product now refers to the number 1. Then it calls all of this code. And since we talked about scope, I'll talk about another situation scope. This variable i is only valid within the scope of the for loop. If down here I said return i, that would have given an error. You can only refer to it within the for loop. And we've gone through this code multiple times. It goes from i equals 0 to i equals 1 to i equals 2, all the way up to i is equal to 1 less than the number. But since we're adding 1 to i every time, it's really going from I. this whole expression right over here, starts at 1, then 2, then 3, all the way up to the number. And each time we're multiplying, it times the original product to get a new product. So at the end of the day, product, after we go through this whole for loop, product will contain the factorial of the number. So product will contain the factorial factorial of the number. So within so after you do this, product will keep referring to a bunch of things. It'll refer, refer to 1, then it'll refer to 2, uh, two then it'll refer to 6 because we're going to do 3 times 2. So eventually product is going to product is going to refer to is going to refer to is going to refer to 6 and then that is returned and that is returned and when i say that that is returned that means when you evaluate this entire thing over here when you evaluate this entire thing over here that entire thing is going to be is going to be 6 and then that lets once we get out of that program it lets it lets the interpreter know that factorial of user input that factorial of user of user input should now refer to that 6. I know this might be a little bit confusing with all of this diagramming, but I really want you to get the sense of what's happening. User input is referring to something. We pass that something to the factorial program. So then we go up here. And within the factorial program now, since we passed user input, and user input was 3, within the factorial program, this is number is going to refer to 3. And then we run this as if number was 3, and then we return product which is going to be the factorial of number and so this whole thing evaluates to the factorial of whatever was in here so the factorial of 3 and so factorial of user input this variable will now refer to that because it's being assigned to that and then we print it and when we print it that's what actually shows up down in our interpreter so hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much in the next video we'll we'll discuss how we might be able to uh, do interesting things to this function itself